Hey everybody, it's Grandmaster Ben Feingold here with more current events. And um, today we have a different current event since the uh, St. Louis Rapid and Blitz ended. The uh, Bundesliga has been going on for a few days. These are the best uh, teams in Germany, in the German league. And there's more than one division, but we're only going to talk about the top division. And in fact, today was the last day. Um, and the two teams that had perfect scores uh, were, were paired. They, they haven't played yet. And um, the teams have all grandmasters. And this is very common in Europe for our American viewers here who don't know. Uh, almost every country in Europe, if not every country, has league matches where teams play against each other. When I lived in Europe over 30 years ago, I played in the German league, the Bundesliga, this one. I played in the Dutch league in the Netherlands, and I played in the Belgian league. And, you know, you make extra money that way. You play some FIDE rated games against good players. Now, these leagues, um, when I was playing in them, they had a limited number of foreign players that were allowed. They didn't want you to stack the teams with all super grandmasters from other countries. So in the German league, when I was playing, I remember you could have either, I don't know if it was six Germans and two foreign players or five Germans and three foreign players. It was one of them. However, I noticed the last couple of days when I was watching the matches, uh, the team that ended up winning, they had no German players. So I guess the rules were changed in uh, the last 30 years. Anyway, these are the two best teams. They played today. Um, why does Basem Amin? He's the um, best player in Africa, and he's a medical doctor. And just a year or two ago, he got married. He's one of the few players in the world who's a grandmaster and a doctor, medical doctor, and I don't know if he's a super grandmaster, but if he's not, he's close. He's been over 2,700 feet, eh? So, and he's playing um, Vallejo Pons, and they're playing in the big matchup. I think they were board five of the eight boards. There's grandmasters on all eight boards for both teams, and Vallejo's team, for example, has Fabiano Caruana on board one, and Amin's team has Shakri Arman Majarov on board one. Okay, now this position's about equal... And this reminds me of a common theme that's good for you guys at home. It's about um, getting your queen in trouble. This actually happens to grandmasters all the time. Uh, in this position, nobody really has a big advantage. I guess I'd take black if I had to, because I like black center. But okay, I mean, I like this bishop a lot. And this bishop's not as good, I don't think. Okay, and I mean, um, made a couple of mistakes and was actually losing pretty quickly. Let's have a look. He played queen b5. That's his first mistake, attacking attacking the b7 pawn, although that gets your queen even more trouble. And now his queen can't retreat to a lots of squares. If it was on c5, he could have played queen c1 or queen c2, made his queen safe, put his rooks on the c line eventually, you know, probably equal position. Okay, and uh, Vallejo Pons, who's a very aggressive player, he played really nicely here. He played the move rookie six, a rook left. He's trying to get at that queen. Now, some of you might say, well, wait a minute. Why am I worried about my queen? It can go to a4. a4 is a pretty dangerous square to go to because it's virtually trapped there as well. Now, you can't take the pawn on b7. It's rook b6 traps your queen. Okay, now he made another mistake. He played rook c2. He actually should have played queen a4 immediately and started extricating his queen, and he didn't see the danger yet. Um, and this happens when your queen moves far afield from the rest of your pieces, you can get in trouble. And after rook b6, you can't play queen c5, because rook c6 is a skewer. He played queen a4, and he thought his queen was safe, because it's impossible to attack. Okay, and here Vallejo played a very nice move, excellent move, and I think it was underestimated by Amin. Um... Well, I was complaining earlier about the bishop on h7, but I will complain no more. Bishop f5 with the obvious idea of bishop d7. The queen really is running out of squares. Um, basically, h4 is the only square, and that's not good either. So white went from equal in the starting position to basically losing here. This position, if two super engines were playing, black would win every time. Okay, Well, humans are playing, so sometimes people blunder. Okay, he played rook c5, 
which doesn't help his queen at all. Frankly, I don't really see a good way to help his queen. Attacks the queen. And after here, maybe he thought he was safe. Maybe. But rook c5 just made things worse, I think, because after g5, the queen only has one square. And I'm wondering at what point uh, Amin realized he was in trouble. Was it here? Was it last move? Was it after bishop f5? I don't know. But he's been in trouble for a few moves now. Queen takes h6 is the only move. And now the g5 pawn is hanging and white's won a pawn. But as you can see, if black moves his knight, that defends the g5 pawn. His queen defends it. It doesn't matter where the knight goes. It also attacks the queen, and the queen has almost nowhere to go. Well, because the rook is on c5, the obvious move is knight e4. Okay, now we're threatening the rook, we're threatening the queen, and the g5 pawn is defended. You can't lose a rook for nothing. So you have to take the, the rook, takes, and unfortunately, we would like to take the knight with the pawn, but our rook on c5 is hanging. So rook c5 is a very strange move from Amin, especially in a big championship game like this, for somebody of such a high rating. This isn't a blitz game. This is a very slow time control. This game took over three and a half hours to finish. So playing queen b5, rook c5, shows that he didn't have the proper carefulness that you would expect from somebody who's about 2,700. He wasn't worried, and he put his pieces in black's position, and they kept getting attacked and trapped and hanging, and he was just losing pretty quickly. Okay, he played knight takes e4, defending his rook. Now the rook's hanging again. Rook takes e5. That must have been his plan. Take all of black's pawns, get like a rook and three pawns for a queen, try to draw that way. Okay, takes on d3, takes on g5 check. King's very safe on f8, takes on d3. Okay, so he achieved his goal. He has a rook and three pawns for a queen. Now, a lot of you are bean counters. Okay, that means you're like, this is worth this, and this is worth this. So when you learned how to play chess, and you learn what the value of the pieces were, you would think something like, okay, the queen's worth nine, a rook and three pawns is worth eight. That's pretty close. All right, that's not a good way to count in this position or in any position. Uh, rook and three pawns in almost any position that's normal is completely losing to a queen. If you could say, I would choose to be a pawn down for nothing or choose to be down a queen for a rook and three pawns, as is the case here, no grandmaster would be down the queen. They would all be down a pawn. None of them. Even though technically it's nine versus eight, that ain't, that ain't the way it works. Okay, so now it's time to get the wrap it up button. Vallejo played rook c8. You have to activate your pieces in chess. The rook on a8 obviously isn't on the right square. He went to the open file. h4, pushing his passed pawn and probably more importantly, getting some more luft. Rook c2, threatening f2. Rook f1, always defend. Rook c5, trading off white's only active piece. And, okay, white, I mean, white has nothing. His pawns are all weak. His rook, his h pawn isn't going to queen. Okay, he's taking all the pawns. Maybe he can draw if he takes all the pawns. Bishop e6. He's like, no, I want that b pawn, because then I can queen my a pawn. Makes sense. Bishop e6, an excellent move. Once he wins the b pawn, the a pawn's going to win the game. Bishop c4, takes, takes, takes. White has two passed pawns, the h pawn and the c pawn. That doesn't matter. Rook a1, a4. This is a, a good example of not resigning. It's a team tournament. Don't resign. a3. And now he resigned because after c6, queen b2 wins and king e7 wins, stopping the pawn. It doesn't matter. So it looked like a very easy win from the starting position because Amin didn't have respect for getting his pieces trapped once they went really far away. That happens to everybody. You move your pieces deep into your opponent's territory, they get trapped, they have no retreating squares, and sometimes you lose them. It happens to the best of us. Well, that was different than our first few videos because this was a slow game, but still mistakes were made. This is Grandmaster Ben Feingold. I'm here at the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta. Please like and subscribe. And also watch Karen and me on our Twitch pages and follow us on YouTube here and my YouTube page. I'll see you guys next time.
Bye.